and another video from Dave. What's up, YouTube? This is Dave's Head Enough Point Seven. This is another video to do with Outcast Season One, Episode Four, A Wrath Unseen Review, and another video from Dave. And yeah, um, pretty much this is my weekly review for Outcast Season One. Uh, this is Episode Four, like I said, A Wrath Unseen. Uh, this is a pretty good episode. I wouldn't say, you know, I, I've been waiting for something to top the first episode, and there's been four episodes now, and I still say nothing has topped the first episode. But it's a really good show, but moving very slow. That's the only downfall. The show is moving very slow. Um, I'd say this episode was a little bit better than last week's, maybe, or about the same. Um, but it was enjoyable. I like every episode except I, I the second one was kind of slow. I just have to say it, it was a little too slow for me the second episode, but it it was needed. We had to learn the backstory of what went on, you know, uh, with his mother. But uh, all the all the episodes of you know that I've seen have been really good, and the show keeps me interested, you know. Uh, but I'm still waiting for an episode to top the first one. The first it definitely had a great opening to this show. So I'm just I, I I'm I'm hoping there's gonna be one that tops the first episode, which I I assume there will be. Um, it just hasn't happened yet. Uh, but yeah, episode four. So basically, uh, what 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 was what was the main thing of this episode was the backstory of what went on with um with uh, Megan Holter and her past. Like, cause last episode, if you remember, there was this guy that was basically stalking her around town. Everywhere she went, he was there. Um, you know, and she even ended up going into his motel room and seeing on, you know, she looked around his room and seen on his computer that he was looking at her Facebook. And then right before he comes back to his room, she's gone. So this week we actually learned what the whole situation with that is. Basically, um, she's out at, out at a dinner with, on a date night with her husband and the guy ends up actually showing up there. And basically, she sees him off to the side. I guess he's with, like, his co-workers because he's a tire salesman. Uh, I just think it's funny some of the, the, the jobs they pick for, like, some of these, you know, just in general. And shows some of the characters what their, what their you know, jobs jobs are they do or whatever. It's just weird. The crazy guy from the past that, you know, probably used to rape and beat her. He's a tire salesman now. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, but yeah, he's basically out with his co-workers, and he's, you know, I guess he sees her too, because she's seen him, and later he comes up to her while she's eating with her husband, and goes from a happy night to a very fucking, you know, weird, you know, she's spooked the fuck out, and he comes up to her, basically shakes, uh, her husband's hand, introduces himself, his name is Donnie, uh, Donnie Hamill, and then he's, you know, the husband's like, who the fuck are you, you know, and he says, oh, we go way back, you know, and then basically after that, because she isn't saying shit, so her husband knows something's wrong. He could just see the whole, you know, how, how the mood went from a good night to fucking like, what the fuck, <laughs> you know, like she's all like fucking not saying shit, spooked out, you know. Um, and then he says to her, like after he's leaving, he's like, I think, I believe he says, we need to go out some coffee, uh, go for some coffee or something like that and catch up. And she don't say nothing like, you know, she don't jump up and go. Oh, okay. Let, let, nice seeing you. I'm glad to see you. you could, the husband could tell something's going on. So basically, uh, that that went on, and then even Kyle ran into him at the bar and told him to leave her the fuck alone. And they ended up getting a fight in the bar, and then they, the the bouncers kicked both of them out. And then Kyle went to fight him again. And the guy just kicked his ass. Um, and he says, "You're." He said something to him like, "You're you're trying to be her." Uh, trying to always be her guardian angel or something. Um, so that all went on, and then later on in the episode, the cop actually ends up pulling uh, Donnie Hamill over and basically beats the shit out of him. But on the cop camera, on every police car, there's always a camera, and it recorded the whole thing because they're basically showing you the camera you know, footage. Like They're showing it actually go on, but they're showing you how it's recording it. So that's not, that could he, I don't know if he killed him, 
if he beat him up real bad or what, but that's going to come back most likely to haunt, to, to haunt Mark Hamill, or Mark, uh, not Dom, I'm thinking Donnie Hamill, Mark uh, Halter, her husband. So that was basically why they called it a wrath unseen, because I even seen after the episode, they had insight to the episode of, you know, like, basically telling you, uh, you know, the, you know, this show's basically about confronting your demons, and she is confronting her demon, because that's from her past. Um, so basically they explain all that, that, you know, it's not all just a regular demon, demons could be people too. Um, so that was basically the main thing, and then they went on with the whole thing with, uh, Kyle Barnes, his, what, 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 what he had going on with the Reverend, they went, the Reverend went to, like, I guess an old case, like, he did, like, an exorcism on this, uh, old lady, and, uh, I guess the, the demon kind of fooled him, you get that from the episode, the demon's still in her, but pretending it's not, because, you know, her, 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 uh, basically her daughter says, you know, she don't, she don't even want to be around her grandchildren, you know, all kinds of weird shit still going on, but it's very mild, you know, and then the Reverend, he has too much pride, and he even says in the episode, he says, you know, his pride got the best of him, you know, it's such, he said, I think he said pride is basically, you know, a sin too that people don't notice, you know, it's a, pride is a, basically a sin that people don't think is a sin, you know, and basically, it just clicks in his head that from, you know, what's going on, he goes back to the place, because what, what happened when they first went there, uh, she ended up falling, and Kyle ended up, you know, going to help her, and touched her arm, and, and it burnt her, and the same thing happened to her when he touched her, as when it touched the little boy, when the boy got all fucking spun out when he touched him, so he, Kyle, you know, told the Reverend, hey, the same shit happened, and the Reverend basically was, you know, just him, you know, his pride got the best of him, he didn't want to listen to Kyle then, but he must have thought about it, like, you know, you've seen the episode, and then he goes back, but, you know, the old lady with the demon that's in her was real smart, and basically told, told, uh, her, her daughter, he's like, oh, she's like, oh, he chained me up, didn't feed me, just to get them away, because he, because basically the demon knows that's, you know, outcast and they, she doesn't want, you know, the demon doesn't want uh, him around because uh, they'll basically do an exorcism. But yeah, that was basically all the main things that happened this episode. And then you had the whole thing with the whole trailer situation with, uh, you know, when they showed a, uh, last week and the week before how there was basically, you know, uh, a watch in the trailer and the sheriff, um, he ends up having like a family barbecue with some guest over his house, and I guess the reason he had that barbecue was because he knew that watch was one of his, I'm assuming, friends or somebody he knew, and he gave him the watch, and he says, and the guy's like, oh, where'd you find it? He says, oh, this, somebody just turned it in, but uh, Mark Holter went back to that uh, trailer and basically investigated it and found that watch with a fingernail and everything, so then um, the... Uh, Basically, the uh, sheriff, or Chief Giles, he went on, he told his wife he was going on a hunting trip or something, and he was basically, you know, watching that trailer, see what goes on, and after he gave that watch back to that guy, he ended up, you know, he knew that guy was going to go back to that trailer, so he ended up, you know, going out there, you know, in his hunting gear and everything, and just kind of watching the trailer, and the guy went there and basically, you know, brought some gasoline and let that motherfucker on fire. So then after he saw that happen, he called uh, Mark Holter, when Mark Holter was actually washing his hands after he beat that guy, you know, half to death, or killed him, and told him, hey, we need to send that evidence in and get it checked out, you know. Um, so that's basically that. And when they were having the barbecue, too, his German Shepherd came out and barked at them people. So there's definitely a lot of demons in the, in the, in the, uh, in the town, so that was basically it, you know, it was a good episode, I really enjoyed it, um, I enjoyed it just as much as last week's episode, uh, to be fair, um, I do feel it's a little bit better, a, just a little bit better, but, um, you know, I would have to give it, you know, I'm not, I don't have to go with the same score, I mean, I'd say an 8, it was an 8, to be fair, it's good, just as good as last week's, it could, you could sit here and argue, say it was a little bit better, but 
here are some things I liked about last week. So it's about about the same, you know. Um, so I'm going with an eight for this week's. I actually enjoyed it. The show is, like I said, it's moving slow. I think it's going to pick up. I know. I noticed next week on the previews they showed how the old lady was talking to Sydney, and she's all worried. Like, like basically the demon in her is telling Sydney, you know, they came by, take care of them, and he said he says he's going to take care of them. So we'll see what happens. It's going to get good. Oh, and two in this episode, what I forgot. Uh, you know, it clicked in Kyle's head. He says maybe, you know, after the whole thing that happened with his wife, you know, when his wife was possessed and, you know, uh, the reverend thought he got the demon out of her. He says maybe the demon's hiding in her too. So that's where they were headed over to uh, Kyle's wife's house because he's worried about his daughter. So that was, a, that was another thing that went on. So that's all going to be next week. So I'm looking forward to next week. Uh, I also heard too that they're moving this show to Sundays. Um, and I heard the show's doing really well, so I'm really happy it is. I really like it. I'm really enjoying it. I like, I, I just like the setting. I like, I like this. I'm, I'm into all this type of stuff. I like horror stuff. I like the whole demons type stuff and exorcisms. I think it's, you know, it's all, all very interesting. Um, but yeah, that's my review, guys. We'll be reviewing it next week. Uh, I'm pretty sure it'll be on Sundays. If it's on Friday, you'll see the review up on Saturday. If it's on Sunday, you'll see the review up on most likely Monday or basically when I get to it. But I'll try to do it Monday if it is on Sunday. And if it's on Friday again, I'll do it on Saturday. But that's my weekly review for Outcast. Are you watching Outcast? Did you see this episode? Are you thinking about watching Outcast? Whatever. Tell me in the comment section more videos to come. Thank you, YouTube.